Hi, this is episode 47 of Crondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. On Tuesdays, I like to discuss ways that you can prepare for a coding interview. And today, I'm going to discuss how to create a binary search tree from an array. When it comes to developer job interviews, questions regarding data structures are very popular and therefore important to prepare for. Binary search trees are one of my favorite data structures to work with because they're incredibly efficient, as long as you manage them properly. And they're also straightforward to understand. Let's begin by first establishing some rules for binary search trees. First, a parent node has, at most, two child nodes. Second, the left child node is always less than the parent node. And third, the right child node is always greater than the parent node. A few weeks ago, I covered how binary search works. So please feel free to reference that post for the search portion of the algorithm. I'll put a link in the show notes right to that guide. In this video, I'm going to discuss how you can create a binary search tree from a data array. Here is the array that we'll be using in this tutorial. This is a basic integer array consisting of seven values that are in unsorted order. The first value in the array is 10. So the first step in constructing the tree will be to make 10 the root node, as shown here. With the root node set, all the remaining values will be children of that node. Referencing our rules from the beginning of this post, we know that child nodes will be designated as the right or left node depending on their value. Therefore, the first step we'll take for adding the 7 to the tree will be to compare it to the first node. If 7 is less than 10, it'll become the left child node. If 7 is greater than or equal to 10, it'll move to the right. Since we know that 7 is less than 10, we designate it as the left child node, as shown here. Following the same pattern, we perform the same comparison with the 14 value in the array. Comparing the value of 14 to the root node of 10, we know that 14 is the right child. Making our way through the array, we come to the 20. We'll start with comparing the array to 10, which is greater than. So we move to the right to compare with 14. It's greater than 14, and 14 doesn't have any children to the right. So we make the 20 the right child node of 14. Our tree is coming along nicely. Now we have the value 1. Following the same pattern as the other values, we will compare 1 to 10, move it to the left, and compare it with 7. And finally, make 1 the left child node of the 7 node. With the 5 value, we compare it to the 10. Since 5 is less than 10, we traverse to the left and compare it with 7. Since we know that 5 is less than 7, we continue down the tree and compare the 5 to the 1 value. With 1 having no child nodes and 5 being greater than 1, we know to make 5 the right child of the 1 node. Lastly, we'll insert the value 8 into the tree. With 8 being less than 10, we move it to the left and compare it with 7. 8 is greater than 7, so we move it to the right and complete the tree, making 8 the right child of 7. I hope that you can appreciate the simple elegance of binary search trees. Like so many topics in programming and in life, the strength of binary search trees comes from their ability to allow data to be broken into small but connected components. From which point we can then work with the full data set in an organized manner. In referencing the binary search tree tutorial I gave previously, we could take the tree that we constructed in this guide and efficiently search through it to find any element that had been previously in the array. As great as binary search trees are, there are a few caveats to keep in mind. Binary search trees are typically only efficient if they're balanced. A balanced tree is a tree where the difference between the heights of the subtree of any node of the tree is not greater than one. If that didn't make any sense, here's an example that may help. Imagine that our array had started out as being sorted. With a sorted array, our binary search tree would look something like this. If we tried to run the binary search tree algorithm on this tree, it would perform exactly the same as if we simply iterated over the array until we found the value we are searching for. The strength of binary search comes from being able to quickly filter the unnecessary values. When the tree is unbalanced, especially like the type of tree that would result from a sorted array, 
it won't yield the same benefits as a balanced tree. You can compare it back to the final output of our unsorted array generated here. All this means is that it's vital to understand the data that you're working with when you're creating a binary search tree. You can integrate subroutines, such as randomizing an array, before you create a binary search tree to balance it. In the future, I'll also cover topics related to AVL and red-black trees. These types of algorithms ensure that a tree maintains the proper balance characteristics. I hope that this has been a helpful guide to understanding how to practically create a binary search tree from an array data structure. Good luck with the interview.